Hey everybody, welcome back to another Farming Simulator 22 how-to video. Today we're going to take a look at the Pumps and Hoses DLC and specifically how to build out a dynamic and expandable biogas plant with the Pumps and Hoses DLC. And ultimately, we're going to take this and turn it into this. But before that, this video is brought to you by 601 Farmer and Madeline Fisher. Thank you for being farm barons. So building out your own biogas plant with pumps and hoses is a really cool and interesting idea. And you can really come up with some very unique and very profitable designs. Here we have one that we built that has a large input hopper. We've got the medium fermenter See how the input hopper automatically attaches to the fermenter. And then we're going to take our methane that the fermenter produces and burn it into energy using our generation plant. And then on any off chance that we may have excess methane, we've got a gas torch that's going to safely burn that excess methane off so we do not run into a explosion hazard. And then ultimately in the end, we're gonna have a storage tank to store our digestate to then later take our digestate out or pump it out and apply it to the fields with our drag line equipment. So this is an example of a fairly basic biogas plant. And then over here we have a, an example of a biogas plant that is a bit more involved and a bit more expanded because over here we have three fermenters. We have three input bunkers and we have three cogeneration plants. We have one gas torch and we actually have two digestate tanks over here. And we're gonna basically demonstrate building all of this in the next segment. But I just wanna real quick Start by showing you that in the end, you feed these things the same way you would feed an in-game biogas plant or a base game production biogas plant that you would place. You're gonna start by adding silage, sugar be cut, manure, or slurry to the bunker. That silage is gonna go from the bunker slowly into the fermenter. You see, we already have a little bit of silage in here. Then it is going to slowly generate methane with that silage. And then that methane is gonna then come over here to our cogeneration plant, where it is then going to burn it into electricity. Then at the top of the hour, just like with all the other production, we're gonna take the energy and sell it automatically for a profit. Now let's go ahead and take a look and see how we do all this in the build mode. Let's talk a little bit about the three base game biogas plants before we really get into the pumps and hoses buildable BGA. So we start out, we have three different biogas plants we can put down. We have a 99 kilowatt biogas plant. It's going to have our input hopper. It's going to have our slurry trigger and it's going to have our digestate trigger and it's going to take a decent amount of space $435,000 to put this thing down and you're going to be able to then instantly start feeding it sugar be cut silage manure or slurry and you're going to instantly start getting methane and energy out at the top of every hour you're going to get money for those and then you're going to also get the ability to have some digestate out of this process if that's not enough for you, then we have the larger 250 kilowatt version. Again, it's gonna have an input hopper for slurry, an input hopper for your solids, an interactive trigger to modify the production cycle, and then also obviously a digestate trigger as well. Now this is once again, kind of pre-built out, pre-designed, and it's gonna be able to produce, in essence, two and a half times as much as the smaller biogas plant for $875,000. Now, if you're not getting enough production out of this one, then you can move up to the big boy, the 500 kilowatt version. And this thing is gonna take up a ton of room because it is designed 
to be longer than it is wide. And again, we have our input hopper for our slurry. We have our solid input hopper for digestate manure and sugar beet cut. We have our interactive trigger, and then we actually have two digestate triggers, one right there and then one off to the side with this particular model. Okay, so that is the 500 kilowatt BGA, and it is the most expensive at $1,180,000. Now, if we take a look at our pumps and hoses by a gas plant, it is all components. We buy components, we piecemeal them together however we want. And at a minimum, there's gonna be a few components that we're gonna to have to put down. We have to put down a fermenter. And I strongly suggest putting the fermenter down first because everything is keyed off of this fermenter. We're gonna talk about, there's three different sizes of fermenter. We have a 20M fermenter, which as you can see in the lower right, it has the ability to produce 425 to 665 liters of methane per cycle. We have the same standard inputs of slurry, sugar be cut, silage, and manure as far as our inputs and the same outputs as far as methane and digestate. Now you'll notice there isn't energy listed there as an output. And that is because, well, we need to put down our own independent energy generator. So we have four, or sorry, three different generators that we could put down and attach to one of our three different fermenter options. Going back to the fermenters, we have the 26M fermenter that starts out at 646 and goes all the way up to potentially 1,001 liters of methane per cycle. And then we have our largest fermenter, the 30M, that's going to start out at 1,089 units of methane per cycle and be able to produce up to 1,604 units of methane per cycle. Then we pump over here to our generators and we have three different generator options. They're going to take the methane from the digester and convert it into energy that is then going to be sold at the top of the hour. Now notice these generators have an input capacity. This one has 425. Next one is 646. And the next one is 1089. Now conveniently, 425. Lines up with the minimum of the 20 M fermenter. 646 lines up with the minimum of the 26 M fermenter. And 1089 lines up with the minimum capacity of the 30 M fermenter. And it's important to mix and match these and know how much methane are you gonna be able to produce and how much methane are these things going to be able to burn off. We also have five different choices for our input hopper. All of these are going to process the same amount of inputs, of solid inputs per hour. Okay, there's no benefit of having the biggest versus the smallest other than the amount that each of these hoppers can store. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna put product into the hopper first and then it is going to slowly feed, again, at the exact same rate for each and every one of these hoppers. It's going to slowly feed that input into the fermenter, which is different than the base game BGA plants. When you dump in 5,000 liters of silage in the base game BGA plant, the BGA instantly has 5,000 liters worth of silage. With pumps and hoses, if you put 5,000 liters of silage into one of these hoppers the hopper has 5,000 liters of silage and it slowly feeds that into the fermenter over time we have our gas torch and the gas torch is going to be used to burn off excess methane we're going to talk about that in a little bit and then that is pretty much everything you need with respect to the biogas plant other than you need some place to store your digestate. And that's where we're gonna come over here to silos and we're gonna to get to one of these storage tanks. We have a liquid manure storage tank. 
and in pumps and hoses, liquid manure and digestate are somewhat used interchangeably, but we're gonna have to put one of these down in order to ultimately store our digestate that is produced from the entire process. Now let's talk a little bit more detail about why we would put one of these down and which one of these we might put down. First, I'm gonna go ahead and make the executive decision to put down a 20M fermenter. And when we do that, it says, biogas plant root building has been created. As I said earlier, everything is keyed off of this fermenter. And now this is the heart of BGA-1. If we put another fermenter down here, it is going to attach to the master fermenter, which is this one. If we want to have two different biogas plants, we're going to have to place these far enough apart such that they do not attach to each other. So for example, I could take the 26M fermenter and place it over here. And now I have another root building being created. And now I have BGA2. Now I have two different BGAs, very independent of each other, BGA1 and BGA2. If we look at the production screen, we're gonna see now we have BGA1 fermenter and BGA2 fermenter. You're gonna see they're gonna take different inputs and they're gonna produce different amounts of outputs. And now would be a perfect time to pull up the chart that I have created related to the three different fermenters. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Here we have a chart that shows us the 20M, 26M, and 30M fermenters. All four are gonna accept the same inputs as sure be cut, silage, manure, or slurry. But you will see that each has a different max capacity that they can store. For example, the 20M fermenter is going to store 11,500 liters worth of sugar beet cut. It's going to be able to store up to 97,500 liters worth of silage, 23,500 liters worth of manure and slurry. Then that is different, obviously, than the 26M and 30M because those are larger fermenters. As far as output storage capacity, each fermenter has the ability to store up to 3,050 liters with respect to the 20 and the 26 M and 7,770 liters worth of digestate for the 30 M and 665 units of methane for the 20, 1,000 units of methane for the 26 and 1,600 units of methane for the 30. As far as input recipes per cycle for the 20 M, we're gonna be able to process 300 units of sugar beet cut per cycle, 2,500 liters worth of silage per cycle, 600 liters worth of manure per cycle, and 600 meters worth of slurry per cycle. The 26M is gonna increase that to 450 units of sugar beet cut, 3,800 units of silage, 890 units of manure and slurry, and then the 30M is gonna go 770 units of sugar beet cut, 6,400 units of silage, and 1,540 units of manure and slurry. Now, why is that important to know? Well, it's important to know because you're gonna have a fixed amount of 24 cycles per month. And if you're not familiar with how Farm Sim 22 production works with respect to cycles per month, if you play multiple days per month, all of the cycles are always normalized to monthly output. So on some of my game saves, I play two days per month. So I would still have 24 cycles per month, but I would really only have 12 cycles per day because we're taking 24 divided by two in order to get the per cycles per day because the per cycles per month are normalized. On other game saves, I may play with just one day months. And in that case, I'm going to get 24 cycles in that game day, which is the game month. If you play five game days per cycle or five game days per month, well, you take 24 divided by five, and that's what your daily input or your daily output is going to look like. Now, as far as production rate, if you only feed the 20M fermenter silage 
and silage is required for each fermenter base. You can't do anything unless you have provided silage. So if you're going to use pumps and hoses and your plan is to only feed it manure, that's not going to work. You have to feed it silage and something else. But silage has to always be in the fermenter. If you only feed it silage, you're going to get per cycle 425 units of methane and 1,900 units of digestate. For the 26M, you're going to get 646 units of methane and 2,900 units of digestate. And for the 30M, you're going to get 1,089 units of methane and 4,800 units of digestate. Now, if you add sugar beet cut to your mix, so you're feeding it silage and sugar beet cut, you're going to get an additional 60 units of methane and 210 units of digestate per cycle. If you add manure to your mix, so it's silage and manure, you're going to get 105 units of methane in addition and 450 units of digestate in addition to just feeding silage alone. If you add silage and slurry, then you're going to get 75 more units of methane and 490 units of digestate in addition to just feeding silage alone for the 20M fermenter. Now, all of these are additive. So if I add silage and manure and slurry, I'm going to increase my capability from producing 425 units of methane. I'm going to increase it 180 units of methane by adding manure and slurry. If I put all, all four inputs, all four inputs, silage, sugar beet cut, manure, and slurry, my 20M fermenter is going to be able to produce 665 units of methane per cycle and 3,050 units of digestate per cycle. And if you remember, when we talked about the 20M fermenter, I said it had the ability to produce 425 units to 665 units of methane. And that's how that range works. Silage, 425. Silage and sugar be cut, we're at 485. Silage and manure, we're at 530. Silage and slurry, we are at 500 units of methane. If we add all of them together, we're at 665. Okay, I'm not going to run through all of the other two fermenters, but just know that these numbers are additive. So ultimately, in the end, you can produce up to 1,001 units of methane and 4,620 units worth of digestate per cycle with the 26M fermenter and 1,604 units of methane or 7,770 units of digestate per cycle off of the 30M fermenter. Something else to note is that I can combine and add more than one fermenter to any one biogas plant. And if I do that, then if you go back to that chart, it's all additive. So if I put in two 20M fermenters, I'm now going to make 850 units worth of methane if I only add silage. And I want to produce that. I'm basically going to go through silage twice as fast now because I have two with fermenters. If I add a 20M and a 30M fermenter, well, I'm going to take 425 units of methane and 1,089 units of methane, combine them together, and that's the methane I'm going to get if I only feed it silage. And take a look and watch how this is going to work. So I'm going to put this one right here. And you can see now I have two fermenters that are tied together via this line. And if I come back here to my production screen now, now suddenly I can take 5,000 units of silage per cycle, and I'm going to make 850 units of methane and 3,800 units worth of digestate per cycle as a result of that. Remember, this is now double of the numbers that we just saw for a single 20M fermenter. I can expand that again just for demonstration purposes and put in a third one. And now we have a third one. And guess what our numbers are going to be? They're now going to be three times, 7,500, 1,275, and 5,700 units of digestate. 
from fermenter one because we now have three 20M fermenters all tied to the same system. Well, now we have to get product into the fermenter. We have to have a way of feeding it silage. So we need to decide which one of these or multiples of these are we gonna put in. We have the small V-Bio 30. It's gonna have an input capacity of 30,000 liters. And you'll see it says fermenter too far away for feeding pipe. And you're like, what's that mean? Well, take a watch of this. There's the feeding pipe. So when we get this close enough, the feeding pipe is just gonna spawn in to the fermenter and we can rotate it around and the feeding pipe is gonna expand and rotate to fit however we wanna place this. So let's just place this one right here, just for fun. Now with this input hopper, we're gonna be able to put 30,000 liters worth of silage, sugar be cut or manure into the hopper here. And then slowly over time, it will feed that through the pipe into the fermenter. Each of these, as I've said, each of these input hoppers are going to feed at the exact same rate. So this one holds 60,000 liters. This one also holds 60,000 liters. It's a little bit different of a design. Then we have the larger one that's going to hold 150,000 liters. And it's a completely different design. They don't have to be attached to the root node. They can literally be attached anywhere to any fermenter that is a part of the system. And you'll see when we put it down, there is now a line all going back to the root node. Okay, everything goes back to the root node. And then we have this one. This one I think is my favorite because, well, we can just, all we have to do is back in. Oh, look at that, that's cool. Which one, which one, which one, which one? So this one holds 115,000 liters, but this one allows you to back into and unload via trailer, really handy. We just walk up to the side here, left click, and we can lower the door. And we can right left click again to raise the ramp. These other fermenters, they require a bucket or a belt in order to put product into. So again, all of those five all process at the same rate. They just have a different amount of capacity that they will hold. Do they affect in any way this? No, they don't. When you add silage or sugar cut or manure to these input hoppers, they're gonna show up here under bunkers. Okay, so those are basically bunkers. What I've been calling input hopper is a bunker here on the production screen. So as we fill these up, the bunkers will rise and rise in percent until they're at max capacity and then they will read 100%. They will slowly feed into the fermenter their products. So then as they feed into the fermenter, we will see the products show up here in incoming materials. And at that point, we are gonna be making methane and digestate. What do we do with that? Well, we have to burn off our methane. So we're gonna come here to one of our cogeneration plants. Now remember, the smallest fermenter is gonna make between 425 units of methane to 665 units of methane. If I put one of these down, just one, let's put it over here. Now we will be able to burn 425 units of methane per cycle. But the issue is we have the ability to just feed silage and make 1,275 units worth of methane. Literally burning off just 425 units of methane is not enough. We're gonna to need to be able to burn off more than that. Well, again, these are additive. So I could put three of these down because I know I have three 
20 M fermenters, and I know that the the Aginator 408, okay, however you say it, I know it burns off the same amount that a 20 M fermenter will produce as far as methane if I only feed it silage. So I could put three down, three, three, we are now balanced. But then later, if I feed it manure, well, I'm now making 105 units of methane more per cycle than I'm burning. That goes back to the fact that the 20M fermenter can store 665 units of methane before it's full. Now, we know what happens when production gets full. It stops. So it's always good to, to do some math and make sure that you're burning off more methane or you have the capacity to burn off more methane, I should say, than the methane that you are producing. And if you have more capacity to burn off the methane than you are producing, then you don't have to worry about putting down a gas torch because gas torches are only needed to burn off excess methane. And if you don't have any excess methane, then you don't need a gas torch because the gas torch will never work. But it is a good safety measure to put down just in case you've miscalculated. You can put down a gas torch and now you are guaranteed to be running a safe biogas plant in the fact that whatever methane can't be burned off by your generation plants will be burned off here at the torch. And therefore, you're not saving volatile, inflammable gas. The only thing we now need to do is put down a silo to store our digestate. And there are lots of silos. We've talked more about these in our how-to video related to manure separation. We're just going to put down this particular tank right here, basically, and we put it down close enough it's going to be tied to because the lines you can see all the lines go back to the home it is tied to the second or to the center fermenter the first biogas plant so now our digestate is going to be able to be stored over here and then we're going to be able to come over here and take out of this tank our digestate for application to the field and so forth. Now, all along, we've added to this plant, and we have biogas plant two sitting over here, and nothing's been attached to it because of our proximity of how we placed everything over here. If I came over here and wanted to start putting something down, then it would connect and attach to this one. And I would start building out this plant as well. So we have our input hopper and we can just go with a very basic system here. And yeah, we don't have to have a whole lot of space being tied up. So now we have our input for our solid. We have our place where we're actually making the methane. We have a place to burn our methane into electricity. We have a safety measure of burning off excess methane and now we need to finally store our digestate. And there, now we have a very basic system. We haven't, we haven't added any capability to it other than just having the middle 26M fermenter. So we've got an example of a fairly basic system here we have input hopper fermenter our generation plant to make electricity and then our torch to burn off excess and then our place to store digestate and over here we have a bit more of a complex system i have three different input bunkers i have three different fermenters all the same size but i could mix and match i could put a 30m down a 26m and a 20m down and have them all tied together if i wanted to I have three different generation plants to generate power. And then I have a gas torch and then ultimately a place to store our digestate. So if we come back over here, we're going to see now we have BGA1 fermenters. 
BG, BGA1 power plants, BGA2 fermenters, and BGA2 power plants. The power plants are separate from the fermenters and they're still tied to the same biogas plant. So let me go and put some product into these things. We're gonna get them making product and we're gonna kind of talk about how it all flows through the system a little bit more. Remember with our bunkers empty, it's showing that we are at 0% right here is running bad. Well, it's, it's not running at all, but it's just mean it's bad because they're all empty. So here we can demonstrate that we are just dumping silage into the pull in bunker. And then once we have silage in here, we start getting some, some animations. While that's dumping, let's go ahead and come over here. And we'll dump in our wheel loader. We're just going to demonstrate adding product into this bunker. You can see now we have the screws are operating. And then I have a telehandler set up over here because of how tall this one is. And we're going to dump product into here. Remember, each of these bunkers are going to process at the exact same rate. So a big bunker doesn't put more product into the fermenter faster. It simply lets you store more product in the bunker as a buffer while it is still feeding it in. I think this is my favorite one because it's going to be so easy to put product into. We've got this running in order to basically pull product into the back there. Let's go ahead and check our production cycle. So we now have 9% of our bunker capacity has product. It's still listed as bad because, well, we've only put a little bit in. And we are slowly feeding product into the fermenter. Even though we haven't activated the fermenter, it's slowly feeding product into it. So you can see already we have 477 liters worth of silage, 498 liters worth of silage now in our fermenter. If we go ahead and activate this, now we are processing our silage and we're gonna be making methane and digestate. If you see our code generation plants, it says 59%. That basically means that we have excess code generation capacity. If we look at our second fermenter where we matched the middle fermenter with the middle code generation plant, you can see we are at 100%. We can make 646 units of methane and we can burn off 646 units of methane to make 5,500 units worth of energy. On fermenter one, where we have multiple cogeneration plants, we can produce 1,275 units of methane, but we can really burn off up to 2,160. So we have excess capacity here. So if we added manure to this mix, might as well, right? Let's go ahead and add, let's go ahead and add a load of manure to this mix. We can now see that we're going to be making 1,590 units worth of methane. It's still under 2160. See our cogeneration plant's up to 73% now because we are making a little bit more methane than we are than we were before. Still under our total possible cogeneration plant capacity but it's still fine. You can see now we are feeding manure and silage into this process. And we are already making digestate. We come over here, we can see we have 211, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 liters of digestate. And the fact that this is going up so fast is somewhat attributed 
to the fact that we have three digesters over here. So we're processing three times faster than if we just had a single fermenter, I should say. So we have three 20M fermenters, so we're able to make three times the digestate, three times the methane than if we had a single one. And if we went and put down another storage tank, it would split the digestate between the two. So if you started to run out of capacity on this one, start to fill up, you just put another one down and then this one would, would stay at full capacity. And then it would fill up the other one as it needed. You see that we're already at 313, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. And we're running at 1x speed at this point. So I really, really like the way this all works. And if we go, let's just add, let's add sugar beet cut to the mix. And we'll see it go up even more. And now that we've added sugar beet cut, we're making 1,770 units of methane per cycle again remember we can burn off 2160 we're up to 81 percent of the methane we are producing to our capacity and you can see we now have two we have three liters of sugar be cut in there 53 years of manure and 1052 liters worth of silage in here and at the top of the hour you're going to see that we are going to basically burn off our methane. So let's go ahead and just kind of speed up. We're at four million four thousand four hundred and nine dollars. Just like with the base game, at the top of the hour, we're going to earn money for our methane that we have burned off. Sorry, we need to activate that. My bad, we didn't activate our code generation. Now we are. So now let's speed up. And we'll see at the top of the hour, then our money will go up as we are getting money for the energy that we have sold. There we go. So now we're at $4,023,411. We've already made $19,000 off of this biogas plant setup. Now it has cost a fair bit of money in order to put this down. But we're also able to make a fair bit of money with this process. You see our cogeneration plants are, are burning methane. All right, and then if our torch over here was running, you would also see it burning as well. You would see over here under production, you would see your gas torch is active, which is bad. You don't want your gas torch active. You want it inactive. You want your cogeneration in the green, which means you want it under 100%. You don't want to be basically making more methane than the cogeneration plants can produce because that means your torch is active. You want your bunkers to have product in them because that means that they're steadily feeding the fermenter. And the fact that the fermenter is near full capacity is good, right? Again, it gives you a little bit of a buffer. So when your bunkers run empty, your fermenter still has product in here that it can work through and then keep running out, keep producing that methane, keep producing that digestate. You see here, we have some other new options. So we have under alkaline products, distribute a cost to buy a gas plant which means it's going to safely, safe, simply distribute the digestate across all of the tanks associated with the biogas plant, right? This tank is associated with the biogas plant because of the lines. If we put another tank down, it's also associated now with the biogas plant. So the option of distribute across the biogas plant, it's now going to split its digestate between the two storage tanks. Change output mode. We can store it, just flat out store the digestate in the fermenter. But remember the fermenter only has a limited amount of storage for digestate. 
that might not be the best option. We have selling. We could just flat out sell the digestate if we did want to put down a storage tank. That's obviously an option. Or if we had some other production chain somewhere further down the line that would take digestate as an input, then we could set it to distributing. And that would not distribute it to our storage tank. That would distribute it to something else. Okay. You'll see our digestate. 11,541. It's not going up. 11,533. It's not going up because I told it to distribute now. We change this to distribute across biogas plant. Then it will start to increment up. That's what we see going on right there. Same thing we have with our methane. We can distribute across the biogas plant, which means it's going to be sending it to our cogeneration plants. We can store methane, which means our cogeneration plants are now not running. You see, they're now not producing energy. Remember, our poor little 20M facility is only going to be able to hold 665 units of methane. Now, we have three of those in our build-out, so we can store three times that. But when that thing fills up, well, we have a whole lot of volatile gas, and we're going to stop all of our production because we are full. We can set it to sell methane if we have the ability to sell methane. We can set it to distribute methane if we have something else further down in a different production cycle that has methane as its input. We could set this to distribution. So it would send methane from this plant to another plant. And then we can go back and we can set this to distribute across our biogas plant. Our cogeneration plants are now running again. We no longer are storing our methane because we burned it up. And that's pretty much how it works. We do have the ability to come in here and rename the BGA. So we've renamed this to the big boy BGA. Top dollar. So now if we look, we have top dollar. And then that particular fermenter is named the big boy. BGA. Fermenter 20M. Fermenter 20M. Right, so we can rename this. Fermenter 2. Rename this to Fermenter 3. Right, you can really just separate it out however you wanted it. And then everything that's associated with top dollar now says top dollar gas torch, top dollar V bio combi 25, top dollar liquid manure storage. Meanwhile, this plant over here is still BGA2. Okay. Guys, yeah, so I hope that has helped you understand how to build out your pumps and hoses biogas plant. I'd be really curious to know if you all have any ideas as to maybe how else you could really expand your setup. Of course, you can put down a, a silage bunker in order to compact your silage wherever you want. You know, if you want to come in here and put one of these down, they're not going to vertically associate with your plant right they're not tied in any way they're kind of independent entities but you could you could come over here you can make your silage then you can take your silage from here into your input bunkers you can bring in silage from your own farm or really any destination that you may come up with but i'd love to hear your all's thoughts about the buildable modular biogas plant that is really, really customizable. I mean, you could really build out a massive plant that is able of going through a significant amount of silage and produce you a major, a major amount of money every month. And until next time, happy farming.